<laughs> Not at all. So how is everybody doing? And I want to thank you for coming this early. Um, like I was telling Melissa, it's um, any testimonies, praise reports, by the ways, anything at all. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, so um, uh, Selena passed her driving test. All right. Congratulations. So on that day, on that day, you know, it's so funny, right? Because we asked for it. I mean, uh, we asked for it. And then uh, the instructor before her, uh, for her, changed. Change. Yeah, change. Okay. Right. So she has not been she has not been an instructor and in taking people for class for a long time. Uh -huh. So she was very good. I mean she was very uh lenient yeah, and and then what she got and then uh after the test the instructor put awesome, awesome job. All right. Good job, Taylor. Congratulations. And she got 100, you know? Can you right. Well, and Earl's a good teacher for her, and you're a good teacher. So you all contributed to her teaching. <laughs> I think it's because we asked for it. Oh, yeah, but she still had to do the work. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Somebody had to be brave enough to sit in the car with her. <laughs> uh, so, so then that very same day, I mean, that very, and she got the driving, uh, the test in Palm Spring. Uh -huh. She picked Palm Spring because it's not very uh, busy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when, uh, when she went back, she drove, right? That day, three people, three times. She almost got, I mean, people almost got into her car uh -huh. when she was driving. But of course, she avoided them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. So yesterday, yeah, last night, um, uh, a white guy was uh, trying to rob her store. Mm -hmm. And, oh. yeah, and... Just right at the door, he was stopped by the police. Wow, look at God. You know, so it really, uh, that experience gave her a little bit, you know, she was like, uh -huh. wow. I said, good, you do not have to experience it. Right. Well, and plus, you pray for your children, and we all pray for one another. And we pray for their protection. We pray for their traveling grace. We pray for their health. We pray for their well-being. When we pray, God sends the angels. That's why you have guardian angels. They come in and surround you and protect you. That's why it says no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Good morning, Anson. Good morning, Earl. How are you? <laughs> Does that make sense? You don't have sleepy hair. Do I not? I think I do. <laughs> oh, yes, you do have sleepy hair. <laughs> I have sleepy hair. Oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> so when you pray and ask for protection and you really believe that, step two is answered immediately. So that's why she couldn't get hit in any, or, any other accidents. That's why she couldn't be robbed. That's why these things, even though she's experiencing it from a visual, but nothing's coming into her direct sphere. Mm. And all she has to do is say, thank you, God. I appreciate that protection and bless that man who was in, an, in need of trying to possibly rob or murder or, you know, thank goodness the police was there. You know, the Thanksgiving. Yeah, so uh, that, that guy, he had a bag of guns. It was, he was uh, ready to rob the store. Uh, mm. But before he robbed the store, he he kind of told somebody that he was planning to rob the store. So the people actually, then the people didn't think that it was right. Mm -hmm. So call, call the police, alerted the police. So mm -hmm. when he was at the door, the police came and surrounded him. Apprehended him. Uh, and then, <laughs> uh, and then, and then, 
and the police were right. The guy was white and he was relieved with not bringing him to jail or anything. Mm -hmm. That's why we pray. So, so uh, Stalina was saying, you know, he was white and the police were white and he was just relieved. It was, it would have been other race, race that would have taken him to the stations. Right. Yeah. That's interesting. Wow. That's unusual. Yeah, that's unusual. We were just released. Yeah, that's very unusual. Right then, and then. Yeah. Well, thank God nothing happened to Selena. Exactly. Exactly. I said, well, I said, thank goodness you don't have to experience that. If not, uh, then she has to go through the <laughs> go through the process of being hold up. Right. No. She's gonna be fine. So that's a good that's a good praise report. Mm. That's a good praise report. And 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 Stanley, maybe Stanley is not is not uh, convenient to talk. <laughs> he he would have his testimony too. He, mm. he went back to school uh -huh. uh, on Thursday. I mean, yeah, he went back to school on Thursday and we were asking for good roommate, you know. Clean roommate, quiet, mm -hmm. and good environment, you know. Mm -hmm. And he got, he was pretty, he was satisfied with his living. Yeah. Good job, law of attraction. You know, so yeah. he, he's, um, he's happy. He's happy, yeah. Uh, now one room, only two people living in there. Right, so now he's comfortable. He's comfortable. He said he's uh, he's good, and uh, yeah. the three roommates that I mean, two rooms, right? So each room is two kids, two mm -hmm. people, and he was the random guy that goes into that this group. Oh wow! He's the random one. <laughs> so <laughs> the the other three, like they know each other, you know, they have their roommates. Okay. Yeah, that, that's good. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, he's an attractor. He's a good creator, also. Mm. Any other testimonies? Anybody I else? have one. Yes, Anson. Oh. We got the house. Yes. <laughs> oh, oh, hey, really? You must talk faster about the number. <laughs> the number. Um, we were really stuck on um, <laughs> three, six, four, five. So it's 364, uh -huh. 500. And, and uh -huh. we were, the thing is, mom and I were still adamant, like, no, we still need to get paid for the deck because $500 does not make up for the deck. Right. And then, and then so, so mom and I were like, okay, let's play the waiting game just like what we did before. Uh -huh. and, and and so we waited, we waited, we waited all the way till the end of the day, like be, just an hour before the deal actually falls apart. Uh -huh. And then I just told mom, like on that same day, I was thinking to myself, like, what? What will pastor say? What? <laughs> what? What? Will, what will Aunt Mel say? What will everyone else say? And then and then the more and more I think, and suddenly just came into my mind. It's like, don't forget that the other side would have given the 500 out of their pockets, hard earned money, $500, and we should appreciate from there. And that's when I started changing my thinking. And then, and then that's when I told mom, like, do you think this is, we should have just accept as is, because, you know, this is what, what we, we got. We, we've already pushed down the price by more than 10 grand in the first place. That's a lot of, a lot of say, and we should do something. And then mom, Mom, sorry, mom, but but mom was was pretty much like, no, we'll wait, we'll wait. <laughs> so just an hour before the deal actually falls apart, and then mom um, texted me back, and she was like, I looked up what the number means, three six four five, and I I I, I don't remember why it said, but but I have to text with me. Um, let's see what it says. The three six four five. Mm -hmm. The purpose of angel number 3645 is summarized in these words, stand, leap, 
and purchase. Yep. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And okay. so, yeah. And, and, and so when, when mom said that, I was like, okay, I'm going to immediately text my realtor and not say the deal fall apart. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I quickly text him as fast as I could. It's like, make the deal now. I don't care what it says. I don't care. If it's embarrassing or whatever it is. Just close the deal. We'll get the house done deal right. and so the realtor was like are you sure it's like yes i made up my mind i convinced my mom if, if my mom were to scold you it'll be on me just go for it <laughs> <laughs> so, yes so we finished all of the forms within all 30 right. minutes he was sending me like five emails five six emails he was like sign up everything right now in like 40 minutes before the deal closes i said okay let's do it so i signed every single thing and then also the referral letter as well for you, Admiral. That was part of the form as well. So it right. does come in as well, which I'm really glad about it. And and so yeah. everything was okay and sign up everything. And so I asked my realtor, is this it? And he was like, Nope. Like, what? <laughs> and he was like, Well, well, the next part is you moving into the house. It's like, oh thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Good job and congratulations. That is so awesome. Uh, yeah, and then, um, but so, so that's about the house part. <clears throat> and then I have another testimony. And it was weird because for the past five, six months, I've been telling myself, I really want to meet my seniors again. Mm -hmm. Like my seniors that I went to uh, at university. They okay. were great people. They were a lot of fun to hang out. And, and all of them were professionals. And I, I see them in, in, mm -hmm. in the tenders and the proposals that I have because they're basically my consultants right uh -huh. but at that level at the working area we're always behaving at a professional level but I told myself I really want to hang out with them I just mm -hmm. don't have a chance to because either they're super busy or whenever we meet up we're always talking about work and that's it <laughs> and then just about three weeks ago I managed to call one of my seniors because I think it's the wrong name there are five catherines in that consulting firm and so i called around catherine <laughs> and one of them was my seniors wow. also, anyway but yeah so so one of them was my seniors i was like hey cat how are you can you solve this problem for me and then she was like i think you called the wrong department <laughs> <laughs> but we ended up chatting and we ended up chatting and then we, were, we were exchanging, uh, you know, like information, what's going on, what's, what's up. Um, um, I took a little bit extra of my break time, but we were just chatting and, and we were having fun. And then I told it's like, you know what, like, maybe we should totally meet up. Like this is, this, this, we, we, we certainly miss each other. Right. And I think we, all of us should find a, get, a time to gather everyone else around and then have fun. And that was the last of it. That was three weeks ago. Uh -huh. And um, just three days ago, um, I received a text from another senior of mine mm -hmm. and he asked me if we we're able to meet up in person and also um, talk more about my career at the government. And I was like, what a coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> so I just met him yesterday. All right. um, we chatted for about an hour or two. And, and, then, and then at the end, I told him this was a lot of fun. Wow. In fact, I was thinking about you as well. And then sure enough, he said this like, yeah, I was thinking about you as well when I was trying to look for a career. And I was like, there you go, right? Yeah. And, and after that, um, I just told him, I told him the same thing I told, I thought I told Catherine was like, Caden, we should totally sit down together mm -hmm. and like plan maybe after I move into my new place to like have a gathering for all the seniors, including me. Right. And it'll be fun, right? Right. And so he was like, yeah, let's totally do that. And during the midst of the conversation, sorry, he does like a lot of stuff. Uh, the, during the midst of the conversation, he, he then um, shared that he, he, he got a house earlier than me, about, about two or three years, or about two years earlier than me. And he mm -hmm. said he's been renovating a lot and he's obsessed about renovation. And so I asked him, well, I just got a house too. And he was like, oh, do you need help? I want to help you. I was like, I just got my answer there. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> That's awesome. As you so, renovator. <laughs> so that is 
that is the intuition actually right that she, he has been receiving the direction you know correct. Uh -huh. correct if you want to say that is the voice of god his higher self his higher intuition revelation discernment all of those things mm -hmm. psychic mm -hmm. medium it's really the law of attraction it's, if you really want to know the truth it's the law of attraction mm -hmm. and he followed the five steps he asked for it but not only did he ask for it even though it took three weeks it took three weeks to coordinate everything to put it together because there's a lot of components to the web so once everybody got in connection look how it flowed together mm -hmm. he ended up making a new friend out of a out of a missed call <laughs> You know, which is great. But then now he has somebody who can renovate and help for what he was looking for in terms of the $500. This person, I guarantee you, is going to have all kind of schemes, if you will, good schemes, <laughs> because that's his, his passion. So, yeah. and what you did was you asked, it was given. You believed, you received, and you begin to, practice being really good at step five being a good asker mm. Yeah. Mm. and now you watch it physically manifest before your very eyes that's why i always say the spirit world is more real than the natural world everything happens in the spirit world before it happens into this physical third dimensional plane called earth mm. and you attracted it and not only that watch this notice what he said we had fun doing it when you are having fun deliberately creating it's fun being a deliberate creator because now it's what easy mm -hmm. yeah it's easy the 364 we did that for you you're welcome <laughs> well at first at first i was a bit worried because um anson was approved for 315 uh-huh and so for the additional uh, 50K, we might have to come up with ourselves, you know, because mm -hmm. the bank will only allow up to three, 315. Mm -hmm. so then later when Melissa was asking me, she said, isn't the number a bit big? I said, yeah. Mm -hmm. But you know what? When the universe give it to, I mean, if the universe arrange it this way, mm -hmm. there will be resources coming in. Absolutely. Absolutely. Almost close to the, you know, closing. Then his mortgage broker came back and said, you are approved for 365. <laughs> it's too easy. Okay. For your info, Anson, we're actually squeezing out every single cent we have. <laughs> Love you, mom. <laughs> yeah. And we are, we're still tagging on the $1 million, remember? Yeah. <laughs> And it's coming. It's already here. It's already here. This yeah. is the fun process of enjoying manifestation, creation. Mm -hmm. When you say you were worried, it's because you got worried because the number was too big because they gave you a first number. Uh, so, yeah. so at first the number was a bit, I feel that, I thought that the number was a bit too big, but I tell myself, I said, oh no, the universe is going to arrange for everything. Oh yeah. Yeah. So uh, let's, you know, go ahead and Watch create. this. Watch this. Will the house pay for itself in 10 years? Yeah, and so we're saying the, the house at 315 was <laughs> crap. <laughs> it is not in a good neighborhood. No. Yeah. It's, neighborhood. it's run down. Um, it was you obviously it was an investor house, so nothing was kept up to right. But right. Mm -hmm. And you deserve, and here's the thing you deserve the best, yeah. You deserve the best think, from God, yeah. Right? That's why I think too, absolutely. Because 315, you end up with people trying to break into your home, mm -hmm. not that they could, but mm -hmm. now you have to pay for extra protection, not that you won't, but now it's it's work. Mm -hmm. When you get to the first home, you don't want it to be that much work. You want it to be, hey, I want to go through the stressful part of the papers and then getting the keys in and then enjoying the house. Mm -hmm. Not, I got to worry about my neighbors across the street because they're smoking dope or they got their car on the front lawn and, you know, nobody's maintained the yard and all the houses are run down and it's just poor environment. Mm -hmm. 
and you're yeah. more worthy than that. And uh, though people in that 315 are more worthy than that, but they don't believe that. Mm -hmm. Because if they did, they would have changed it. Yeah. And, and here's the thing. Yeah. When you look at that number, the 315 compared to the 365, the mortgage is not that much difference. Yes. Yeah, but it's, imagine if the, the mortgage you know, couldn't get any extra. We have to come out with the cash of 50K. <laughs> That's part of your point five. It's too easy. I, I know. And then I was thinking, like, ah, no big deal. Okay, we're going to go through with it. And then, so, uh, indeed, he got approved. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so you worried for nothing. You worried for nothing. See what I mean by when numbers get too big, people worry for nothing. Yeah. When um, you deliberately know you are God, you are one with God, and everything that you decree and declare is already given to you because He does the work. There's not a number He could have went and got. He would. He could have went and got a one million dollar house. Mm. One million dollars, and it would have made a difference. Not one difference. I, yeah, I wasn't worried. I was just be aware of the number is getting three one five to three six five. It's too big. Uh, no, it's not too big. It's slightly bigger. <laughs> and, then, and then I was thinking like, oh, so I, I have to, you know, that's why we were discussing about the 50K, you know, how, how to bring it in from Asia, right? Or, or who to ask the, for. The, the <laughs> well, Pastor, uh, this is it. When, when the, the, the mortgage in Canada and America is different mm -hmm. because they... The, okay, let's say the, now the number is 365. Mm -hmm. Okay, it was 315 before. With 315, they're coming out with 100,000, you know. Okay, and uh, here's, here's my so, point. So, so. We understand, that. we understand that. But is anything too hard for God? No. Oh, yeah. Of course not. I mean, it I know happen. that. But as human, when we see the numbers, we have to yeah, know that there's a difference. <laughs> and so we have to make up for it. That's what Anson told us. He said, we, we have to make up for it. So I was kind of preparing, but uh, not very worried. We're just going through the process, you know, asking around, where can we find like 50K under the mattress? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that, in the end, in the end we don't it. have to come up with that extra. Ask and is given because he believed. Yeah. He wanted the house so bad because that's his dream house. And the deck, you can take care of the deck anytime. Yeah, take it off. I told Einstein, change, change. <laughs> so you got your prayers answered. Even though the difference between U.S. and Canada is a larger number, absolutely. But when you are manifesting, there's nothing impossible to you. And that's what we want you to understand. There is nothing impossible to you. And that's where you have to truly, truly, truly trust God and believe that what you speak as a deliberate creator is going to manifest. Mm -hmm. And it's all energy. That's all. Everything we talk about when we say vibration, we're still talking about energy. So here's the thing. Even though the number got a little bit big and you didn't really get worried, it was just a more of a concern of how do we create something but then here's the thing, nothing happened yet. You didn't wait for the bank. <laughs> what the, bank the bank was like, they need to process it again and confirm that we are looking at 365. Right. Yeah. And in the end, they did come back, which is like what, last week? <clears throat> yeah, and I think, I think the bank also uh, used an appraisal to actually go and look at the house. Mm -hmm because they also want to know whether it's worth that kind of mortgage, right? Mm -hmm. but, but the thing, now, now I understand a little bit about it, it's just that pre-approval is not a, a done deal yet. Sometimes the value change also, right? Correct. Absolutely. No, this is unusual. <laughs> it's unusual because pre-approval, pre-approval is actually uh, is given to you for you to shop within that budget. Mm -hmm. Not, not but just fifty thousand above the budget. Yeah. You know, <laughs> but maybe, maybe okay. This is it. Maybe, maybe also because uh, you come up with a cash, a lot of cash. Mm -hmm. So actually, 
315 is actually your loan. Your loan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. if you put in 10,000 cash, uh, 100,000 cash, maybe you can buy a house that's 415. No, no, no. Everything that we do is not going to be normal. So it's unusual. Never meet like something like that. Never. 5,000? Yeah, but not, not 50,000. <laughs> but look who, we, look who we are. Yeah. Mm. Look who we are. There is nothing that we do that's peculiar. There's nothing we do that's normal. There's nothing that we do that's ordinary. Hmm. Nothing. Once you change your thinking, now is anything too hard for God? Is really the question. No. In other words, whatever I ask and I get into believing and receiving, it's going to be given unto me. You have to understand the kingdom has already been given to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have to take it by force. And when you take it by force, that means to say, the numbers are not adding up. This makes no sense. Faith never makes sense. <laughs> yes. Faith is to design to give you more faith and increase your faith. That's why you go from faith to faith to faith to faith. When we say faith, all we're talking about again is your believing. Okay. What you're believing, uh, what you're desiring. That's all. You're always going to be creating. Mm -hmm. Just what you put the value and the judgment on what you're creating. Correct. Everybody, everybody, Focus so much on the numbers, they all they temporarily forgot about the house. And to answer said, wait a minute, the house, the house, the house, the house. Yeah. Because the numbers, the house will take care of itself. The house will pay for itself. The neighborhood value, because he's there, will increase. The house of the the house will go up in market. Mm -hmm. It will get better because of the area he's in. It won't depreciate, it'll appreciate. So over time. It paid for itself, but right now it makes no sense why these numbers don't match. Sure it does. You asked for it. And not only did you ask for it, you got in the vibration of saying, I can see the keys in my hand. I can see me pulling myself up into my driveway to my garage. Even though this porch is not the porch that I'm wanting, but it's attached to the house that I love. And I love this porch because I can eventually fix the porch because now my best friend comes in and he's a refurbisher. Uh -huh. Yes, and I'm seeing that he's already community. He's already creating a community mm -hmm. around that house. Absolutely, when he do, and he's going to bless that whole area. Area, not that it's already blessed, but he's going to add more blessing to it. Mm. Yeah, because of what he knows, and what they don't know, everything is going to increase a hundredfold. Everything. Mm -hmm. That's why the number that you're you're concerned about what he quickly catch up with itself mm. very quickly we promise you that's why this whole thing is peculiar <laughs> yeah. nobody can explain the numbers all these math petitions and nobody can do god's math <laughs> yeah. And yeah that day when i was sending was i was sending uh thinking Stanley to his dorm, uh, not dorm, off-campus living, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, around that area, the, around outside the school, just outside the school surrounding of that school, there are two houses, two houses uh, for sale. Mm -hmm. And they're nice houses, you know, I mean, modern, mm -hmm. right? And Selena said, oh yeah, I like this house, I like the house. So, the, um, well, I said, oh, yeah, there are houses. Uh, don't have to be in Bel Air, mm -hmm. but it's outside, uh, yeah. just one street away from the, the edge of the school, you know, the surrounding of the school. There are houses there. Beautiful houses. Yeah, beautiful houses. So, um, Selena, Selena was saying, yeah, I like that one because it's modern, you know. <laughs> right. And, and, and oh, so that day, according to my horoscope, uh, says that I, I was manifesting. Yeah, always. And here's the thing. You as God can move anywhere you want. You can create anything you desire. 
if you want to live in Bel Air, you can live in Bel Air. If you want to live outside of Bel Air, close to the school, you, here's the thing. This is what we love so much. You choose. You choose. And once you choose, stand on that decision of asking, this is what I want and this is why I want it. Get in the habit of asking yourselves, this is what I want. Why do I want it? Why do I want it? This is what I want and why do I want it? This is what I want and why do I want it? I want this house. Why? It's going to bring me joy. Mm. It doesn't have to be anything more than that. Mm. Other than it's going to bring me happiness. Yeah. It's a temporary happiness, but it's a happiness that you can build more on and more on and more on because now you get to add new furniture, mm -hmm. new dishes. Now he has to have a housewarming and everybody's going to bring gifts. They're going to come and bless the house, right? That has not been blessed in such a long time with festivities. Yeah. He has the blessing to put new coats of paint, carpet, tile, wh whatever he desires. The house begins to pay for itself. And here's the thing. This is actually the whole lesson that we're talking about when it talks about your soul begins to speak. He listened to that intuition and was guided to that place. And here's the thing. Everything was laid out before him of what he was wanting and why he wanted it. The 315 was not what he wanted. <laughs> oh, didn't settle for less. Most people will say, well, this is my confined number. I have to stay within this number. And how dare I go to the bank and ask for more money? Whoa. <laughs> and they give it to you. Yes, yes. Because most of the time, if they ask for more money, the bank will say no. They'll say no. But we've been so adjusted to people saying no that when we get a yes, we're surprised. Yes. We're in awe. Well, I always tell Anson too, right? If you don't ask, you will know. So ask. Ask. Ask and you will be given. Ask and it will be given. Hey, it's my brother. <laughs> that's, and that's, that's the connection. That's the reestablishment that we're talking about when we talk about your soul begins to speak. When you begin to ask yourselves long ago, who I am, where did I come from? What is life? What is God? What is the meaning of all these things? These are all part of the five, whether you realize it or not. Because now you're, once you ask, how does my soul begin to speak? Now your third eye, your pineal gland, your pituitary gland, all these glands that's in the brain that scientists can't really figure out begin to say, hey, I connect directly to God. I begin to connect to the other side of the veil and they begin to give me infinite, infinite, infinite wisdom beyond my comprehension or perception. But as long as I stay in the believing part, now when I speak it, it is going to come into pass. So now I know who I am. Who am I? I am God. I am a child of God. I'm, you put yourself there. And it's, here's the thing, not as arrogant, not as cocky, not as um, offensive, but in terms of, I know my rightful place. I know who I belong to. I know who I am. Most people don't know who they are. That's why they have so much confusion. That's why they have so much lack. There's, that's why there's so much need. That's why there's so much chaos, so much destruction, so much sickness. People who are sick don't know who they are. When they get sick, they have not listened to the soul speaking to them on how to heal the body. And here's the secret. We always say everything starts with a high vibration to keep sickness off of you. So when they go into the lower vibration, what they're doing is really getting into guilt. Mm -hmm. Guilt brings out all types of various diseases, infections, viruses, cancers, because people begin to gift trip themselves on such a low level that they don't even realize they're doing it, that it becomes so small that when they go to a doctor, they don't trace it for years and years and years, and all of a sudden here it pops up. And they get in the face go, oh, I must have eaten this, but I'm a vegetarian. I'm this and I'm that. How did I get this cancer? How did I get this disease? Not realizing, it was the guilt and the fear that they put in their mind and begin to manifest. Mm -hmm. This is why you see a lot of sickness in the world. 
So when we heal, we don't heal you. You heal yourselves, but we are just a conduit to your healing. Mm -hmm. Like, for instance, you remember Brother Williams last week? Mm -hmm. Yeah. When he came in like this, bless his heart. Y'all remember? Mm -hmm. When he sat down, we began to pray for him. I rubbed my hands as hard as I could, and my hands would not get hot. Mm. No friction. Clapped my hands as hard as I could. First time ever that that happened in terms of a healing. Because he was wanting a different healing. So we and him were in communication of what he was wanting. So as we began to heal him, and he began to heal himself, at the end... He sprang up off the couch before we had to pull him off the couch because mm -hmm. his back was hurting. And then he called, he called me the next day, Pastor, I feel great. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I say, we didn't do anything. You healed yourself. Yes. You asked, you believed, received, God answered it. Mm -hmm. And I said, look how long, I said, from the time you sat down, well, actually, from the time you were injured, from the time you sat down and from the time we begin to influence mm. your healing, I did nothing other than touch him in certain parts of comfort, love, compassion. He did the rest of the work going, well, if pastor believes, I must believe too. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, as we go on, his body begins to get relaxed and more relaxed, and more relaxed, and more relaxed, till he's nodding in class, and I'm happy that he's nodding in class. And this is not an embarrassment to him. This is a testimony, because he was receiving his healing, because when you're there and you're so relaxed, now you can receive what you're desiring. Vice, I'm going to try to stay awake and pay attention to the pastor, but I'm in so much pain. Is he any good? No good at all, because he's not there. He's more my back, my back. Mm. So now once we took his mind off his back, his cells went, oh, we want to be happy. We want to be free. We want to be relaxed. And we relaxed all the muscles and all the tension that he was holding up because all it was was tension. You ever notice when you get tense, you don't listen to your body? Yeah. Your body tightens up. Mm -hmm. This is what we were talking about, the expansion and the constriction. Mm -hmm. He was in a constriction mood. He was being squeezed by the enemy. And he created it. He let them come in and let them squeeze him because he, he gave away his power. Mm -hmm. He didn't listen to that voice that was speaking to him, trust me, love me, speak to it. So we had to influence him to speak to it himself. And then after we finished, within that one hour or so, he sprang up, and now he's more mobile. The next day, he's out of bed. Oh, Pastor, I feel great. Good. Yeah. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes. So you heal yourselves because you're, think about it. If you cut your hand, it does what? It heals itself. Yes. I didn't come and heal you. I didn't say any special prayers. I might come in and put some antibiotic on it so it don't get an infection for you. <laughs> But at the end of the day, your body already knows how to take care of itself. Every cell in your body is already connected to source. Every cell in your body is already speaking to what your body already needs. It's already connected to the soul. Mm. This is why, how many of you have been inspired to go look at certain books out of nowhere? In those books, you were guided, and then you read something in there that just stood out, that you went, wow. Mm. or maybe not a book, maybe it was someone or something or something on a TV show or something on the radio or, or someone said something mm -hmm. and it was so profound. This is when you begin to listen to your soul. Mm. Feelings are the language of the soul. Mm. Your feelings are the language of the soul. So you know if you are possessed by an archon or what we would call them demons. You know if you're possessed by a demon because you feel the what? Constriction in your body. Mm -hmm. The nervousness. It attacks your nervous system. 
When it attacks your nervous system, everything is off balance. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. But you are compelled to listen to your intuition, to go grab the book off the shelf and open it. It is your intuition and your guides telling you there's information there that is valuable to you mm. for your learning, mm. for your advancement, to help you with a solution to a problem you're asking for or wanting to get answered. Mm -hmm. So you begin to listen to that voice and go, have you ever asked yourself, why did I really go pick up that book? Why did I really turn the radio station on this particular time and all of a sudden hear a certain message mm -hmm. on the way to wherever I was going? Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. When yes. you begin to do this, you begin to get excited because now you're listening to your voice. You're listening not to the one that's giving you the, you remember the old commercial they used to give the, the angel on one side and the devil on the other side? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, now you're listening to that good angel and not confused. You're learning to listen to that intuition as you said earlier. But here's the thing, within your body, there are chakras and meridians. Mm -hmm. Basically, in the simplest terms, there are wheel of energies within your body. Each of these wheels within your body is connected to your soul, which your soul is connected to infinite wisdom, the one who is all, okay? So each day that you meditate, you are balancing each of those chakras to help your voice or to help your soul listen to that voice or your intuition or the voice of God or your higher self or if you want to call it Bob, mm. you call it Buddha, you can call it the Christ, you can call it, it's still a loving voice that's always going to guide you. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So on the next page, we'll flip over. The longing to awake has come from this moment, though you do not understand it, you begin to attract slowly at first, perhaps stumbling a bit now and then, exactly those situations that will keep proding to you to look deeper. A meditation teacher comes, a prayer group comes that you feel called to join, a spiritual journey overseas for service that many of you took. When y'all took that service overseas, you, you were listening to your spirit because you didn't resist it. That's why the work that was done there was so blessed and so anointed that will carry for years and years and years and years. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You begin your process of your study. And here's the thing. Your study is not this. This is just your reminder. Your study is of that of yourself and your relationship to God. That is your real study. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. So each time an experience that you might call bad, good, or evil, this is you learning yourself through that experience. You attracted it. So once you attracted it, what is the lesson I'm to learn from it? Mm. In other words, why, what do I need to heal from this that's making me feel uncomfortable? Mm -hmm. It always boils back to healing. Even those conversations that might feel uncomfortable with another person, whether it be about education, government, big time religion, because everybody wants to fight religion. Everybody wants to fight government. Mm -hmm. These are uncomfortable conversations for people to have. Yeah. Well, people have to ask themselves, what am I to learn from this situation? Not from particularly this person, because I am going to learn from this person, but what more importantly am I learning about myself, about this person, through this person, about me? Mm -hmm. Why did I, in other words, why did I attract this narcissist to me? Mm -hmm. I can't be a narcissist, or can I? <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you begin to study yourself, okay? Mm -hmm. And a new question is emerging. No longer is the question, how can I survive? How can I make money? How can I do all these things? A new question emerges in the mind, who am I? Wow. Everyone has asked that question, whether they believed in God or did not believe in God. Everyone who's asked that question 
in some form or another. Yes. Okay. And everyone has either identified themselves mm -hmm. or they're still lost in the illusion. Yes. Here's a way to determine if people are lost. You ever ask anybody what they like and they go, I don't know. Mm -hmm. What you want to do? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Where you want to go? I don't know. They have no answers for nothing. They're waiting on you to give an answer to lead them somewhere. Yeah. They don't know who they are. And a lot of people don't know who they are other than my name, my identification number that was given to me by the government. Yes. That's all they know. Mm -hmm. Anything past that is I am meat, muscle, and bone. <laughs> I think I have a soul. I might not have a soul. Mm -hmm. They don't know. Mm -hmm. So they tend to act out that way, thinking that's the only way, because they don't know who they are. Mm -hmm. And when people have not awakened, it's our job to wake them up. Yes. Because it's a, also a further awakening for you. Even though you might say, Pastor, I'm awake, but we're still always awakening. There's so many levels to this awakening. Yes. 12, technically. Mm. Mm. Yes. So as we continue to wake ourselves up through other people and what we're experiencing, we're also trying to influence them to wake up also so they can see the light in us. Mm -hmm. And as we begin to help them influence and heal themselves, Especially, here's a good one, too. When people are, are hurting, merely ask Holy Spirit, Great Spirit, what can I do in this moment to soothe my brother or sister's broken heart? That person who was trying to rob Celine's store was brokenhearted. Mm. Did he have a mental issue? Absolutely. Was she well protected? Absolutely. Could anything touch her? Not at all. Not the cars swerving in and out of her. Not the person who had a bag of guns who wanted to commit a crime who they let go, which <laughs> he won't come back there, though. Mm -hmm. Because she knows who she is. Not once in that story did I hear Melissa say she was fearful. I never heard her say she was afraid. Now, she might have been, but she never said, well, Selena was afraid. She just said, hey, this guy was apprehended at the front door. Mm -hmm. There might have been some fear, maybe. I could be wrong. But I did not hear her say she was afraid. Mm -hmm. She never said, I was afraid for my life. She never said, Celine said, I'm afraid for my life. Yeah. Yeah. That's a different fear. Mm -hmm. That's a different knowing of who you are. And once you know who you are, it is impossible for any demon to touch you. It really is. You have dominion over all of that. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, as we continue. <coughs> uh, where am I? Oh, there may be many forms to it, but the question remains one. Who am I? What am I? From where have I come? What is life? God. What is God? How can there be anything at all? Somebody has asked those questions in some form or fashion. Yes. These questions begin to stir in the mind. Often they first make their appearance in some form around the age of 10 to 12. As you enter into a stage of life, is the first state of taste of individuation. Just like when a child was born and it began to sense that it was one, it was other than the mother's body at around the age of 10 and 12, you begin to sense that you are other than the mother, father, that there is something that wants to think for itself and be for itself. That's why children walk before they talk. Mm. Think about that. Yeah. They walk before they talk. Shouldn't it be the other way around? Nah. <laughs> but you notice, what is the age of them forming? 10 to 12. Before puberty. 10 to 12, yeah. Mm -hmm. But we notice, we said there's always 12. There's 12 dimensions. There's 12 of everything. There's 12 realms. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about the 12, this is a, a majestic number. Mm -hmm. Okay? 
often those questions will be will be begin to come that this first is a staring usually those questions are not attended to there's much too much else to do you still need to learn to think you still need to learn to drive a car you still need to learn to balance your finances later those questions occur again and generally in the early to the mid 20s but again the momentum is to become established as a physiological being and so the questions are suppressed into the 30s and most definitely by the 40s, those questions begin to press upon consciousness. You know how to make money. You know how to manage your finances. You've done these things in the world. You've had sex. You've baked cakes. You've thrown birthday parties. You've gotten drunk. You've done all of this, but something else is known within you. This is also the point of great challenge. You ask yourself, what will be I committed unto, love or fear? And that's really what it boils down to. We started off saying, Satisfied, not satisfied. In essence, we're saying the exact same thing, love or fear. You cannot serve two masters. You're either going to hate one or love the other. So we tell you to really choose love, choose satisfaction, choose the highest level of your being. Because when you do that, now you are training yourself to listen to that voice within you. Okay? Will fear run me? You see this every day with people who complain, with people who are in need of, when people are saying, I'm afraid to fly, or I'm afraid of dogs, or I'm afraid to swim because a shark might come and bite my leg off, or I'm afraid to, whatever. You see they're ran by fear. Your job is to wake them up so they're no longer in fear, okay? Will the very principle that I've identified myself with and have utilized to ensure my survival, my ordering of life, will these things become more important in realizing the self-awakening of Christ within? So as you begin to continue to learn and grow, you begin to listen to that voice, and then you send out that text immediately. Oh, we want the house. Boom. Mm -hmm. Listen to that voice. You trust that voice. OK? Mm -hmm. OK. Questions, comments, concerns? Mm -hmm. All good? All good. All good. Yeah. All right. We always get our answers. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys are deliberate creators, and you're good at it, really good at it. This is just practice. Everything, and here's the thing about the practice. You will never find one practice that will be unlike the next. It will always be different. Mm -hmm. I've never performed one healing that was exactly the same. Mm -hmm. I've never performed a miracle that was exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Never. But I've always, it always come from the same source with the same results. Mm -hmm. My job is to dance and play in the playground of manifestation play with the universe have fun with it mm. Mm. all right let's pray out yeah. thank you source above all we thank you for allowing us just to come together and we thank you for teaching us guiding us we pray as we open up our hearts and our minds to receive this teaching and apply it to our lives taking to the world that is good holy and beautiful for that is the essence of our being we thank you for not judging us too harshly and forgiving us we thank you for using us for signs, wonders, and miracles, our gift and our talents, to bless those that you put before us, new and old, that all we say and do will be of you and not of ourselves, that you get the glory down and the praise. We ask that as we go through this week, continue to bless us with abundance and prosperity and 11.5 million, hallelujah. And we thank you for helping and healing our bodies. We thank you for those around us, our neighbors, our neighborhood. Bless over the homeless, the sick and shut in, those who are in mourning, those who have lost loved ones, those who are in hospital beds, we pray for their well-being and their health. And we thank you for the attendance of them. And we thank you for all these things you've given us. We cannot thank you enough. This is our prayer that we offer up to you in Christ's name. Amen. Amen and amen. All right. Love you all. We'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Bye-bye. Uh, thank you all for waking up this morning. We appreciate it. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. -bye. Bye.